Hi, welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you, come follow me for September. I'm excited to get into this. And so if you like this kind of content and other homeschool content, please remember to subscribe and let's do come follow me. Okay, so last month, come follow me was mostly Psalms. This month, it is mostly Isaiah. <laughs> So I don't know which one's better or worse. <laughs> I feel bad saying that, but I actually enjoy prepping this one better. I'm more familiar with Isaiah than I am with the Psalms. So the first week is Proverbs, and I don't think I'm gonna mention anything about Proverbs right now in this booklet, but there is a whole week on Proverbs. And then the next three weeks are all Isaiah. And so we're gonna have some fun with it. And remember these downloads for this and the bingo cards will be down in the description box. My website has had lots of problems, so I'm not posting anything on there right now, but you can still get links to the PDFs for these down below. So make sure to look down there. But we're gonna start off with guess who, and I already told you the answer because we're talking about Isaiah, but I feel like some of these will be kind of hard for kids unless they're somewhat familiar with Isaiah already. And so you could always flip to the Bible and be like, okay, well last week we talked about Proverbs and then like what's gonna be coming next and kind of give them hints like that or have them look for it in the scriptures and things like that. That might be a little bit easier than some of these clues. I just, they're just not quite as familiar as maybe some of the Book of Mormon stories are. And then they're gonna draw their favorite story of Christ in the box because Isaiah prophesied a ton about Christ. And then we're gonna move on to something, the temple. And so we're gonna talk about the temple because there's lots of scriptures in Isaiah that are talking about the temple coming to the Lord's house. And so here you're gonna draw a picture of your home in the top box to help kids understand that our temple, our homes should compare to the temple and holiness and in sacredness. And what we're doing in our homes should reflect, you know, the peace and the quiet that we find in the temple. Obviously our houses are a little bit chaotic sometimes, but you get the idea. <laughs> and so that's what they're gonna draw in the top box. And then in the bottom box, I think they're gonna draw a picture of the Lord's house, any temple they wanna draw a picture of. And you're gonna talk about it. And then you're gonna read verse three in the Isaiah chapter it gives you. And it's gonna say something that is happening to this temple. And so they're gonna to add to their picture down here below as they read that. So it's something, you know, they can, they can initially draw the picture, but then there's going to be more coming that they're gonna to add to the picture as they read the scripture. This one I thought might be a good visual for them with becoming clean. So it's the, you know, your sins being scarlet or blood, they'll be as clean as wool or white as snow. You know, those are few different ones that we hear. And so they can draw a picture here, but only using red, whether it's a crayon, a color pencil, a marker. And then they can try with white to go back over it. Is there white markers? I don't know, I put white marker here. I'm sure there is somewhere, <laughs> but maybe not kids white markers, but they can use color pencils or a crayon and try to get rid of all the red. And then talk about how amazing the Christ atonement is because it does get rid of the red. Those things that we do wrong, the mistakes we make, can be made white as snow. And so I just thought maybe that visual might help them. And then the next week we're gonna be talking a little bit about the plan of salvation. I did not put the plan of salvation in here. I have in past ones. You could review it or kind of just go through it a little bit because this, I put I lived in heaven in here because some of the Isaiah uh, verses and chapters are talking about the pre-mortal council in heaven and Satan and his attitude and all that kind of stuff. And so I did this song because I think this is a beautiful song. I love this song. And it's really good at kind of giving a little bit of an overview of what was going on before, but you can definitely go into it more and talk more about what was going on. And then we're going to have two days where we're talking about apostasy and restoration. So here with apostasy, they can go in to the Bible dictionary if they want or other like study helps that are on the church website and define what apostasy means. You could do some sort of visual with it. You know, there's a whole bunch with like the cups or different things like that where you could build Christ's church and show how during, like after Christ died, stuff started to be taken away and it fell. And then the next day, the restoration happened with Joseph Smith. So you could, kind of add that in if you want. That's something we did as missionaries a lot. But then down in the bottom box, you're gonna read these chapters 
verses, whatever they are, scriptures in Isaiah and write four things, or you can draw them if you're more comfortable with that. People were doing in Isaiah's time that led to apostasy. So just some of those things that might cause us to fall away and not be focused because you know this was a huge apostasy after Christ died, but there's individual apostasies happening. And that's kind of what Isaiah is going to be talking about. And then we'll have the restoration that occurs as well. So you could, again, do something more visual, fun. Maybe you have other activities you'd like to do for these. A re good review of like Joseph Smith and everything would be great in here. And I think just in these boxes, they're gonna draw two pictures. So one in each one of a marvelous work because it talks about in Isaiah, a marvelous work that's going to happen. And that happens with Joseph Smith and is still happening today. And so what are some of those things that are evidence of the marvelous work? So like the temples, the scriptures, the first vision, all those things. I gave a few examples, but you can think of more, your kids can think of more. And so that'll be kind of fun. And again, you can just add to it, make it a lot bigger or smaller, just kind of depending on what you wanna do. And then the last week, I believe, yes, we're in the last week, is about being a witness is one of the scriptures. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen. And so you're going to talk about what it means to be a witness and not just in church, because that term we use more related to church or maybe law and not so much in other things. We use other terms probably like, oh, you tasted something yummy. Okay, you can go tell people that this tastes yummy, you, this restaurant is really good, or this product is really good, right? You're kind of giving a review of it, but you're being a witness for that thing. And so describing it that way might make it a little bit clearer what it means to be a witness to Christ, of Christ, you know, for your kids. And so in this top box, they're gonna draw something they've been a witness to, like in more of a secular meaning, whether it's a food or something like a soccer ball or you know, something like that. I give a few examples, a place they visited, they could give a review of it. And then something you know about Jesus Christ and his gospel, okay? And so this could be the Book of Mormon, this could be the prophet, and then encourage them to be witnesses in those ways this week. So talk more about the prophet, share more about the Book of Mormon. That's how you can be a witness of Christ, okay? So that's kind of what that one is. And then this one is some of these scriptures, really, if they weren't explained to me in Come Follow Me or by my husband, I would be like, I don't know what Isaiah is talking about. But a lot of them I'm super familiar with just because they're the ones we always repeat. But then there's other ones like this one that I would have been like, I didn't get that out of that scripture at all. But this, I talk about how one of my favorite things to do is watch the water and or the ocean or a river, like it's just soothing. And that's what the scripture is talking about. As we keep the commandments and we have peace as a river, you know, as the ocean, we can have that feeling of peace. And so down here, they're gonna draw a river through here. And then on either side of it, they're gonna draw, I think it's four commandments that the Lord wants us to keep. Those things that will help bring that peace. So they can draw or they could just write them if they're at that point where they can easily write things down. And then we're almost at the end. I just have a couple more things. And so this one, they're gonna be going through a few different scriptures. I love it when I can get them in the scriptures and also throughout the whole standard works. I feel like that is even better. And so you're gonna look for a phrase that's similar in all of these. And this is a hint. The title is a hint. Okay, and then they're gonna write who is saying these things. Just kind of help them with reading comprehension and to pay attention to what is going on in the scriptures and to you know keep their stories a little bit straight. So hopefully that's a good fun activity. Again, you might wanna, if you have a whiteboard, I look this way because I have a huge whiteboard on the wall, you could draw it up there and do it all together, especially if they have a harder time writing, that might be nice for them to have you writing stuff so they can copy it. And the last thing I wanna mention is the obstacles. So in these scriptures, it's gonna talk about obstacles that get in our way from going on this straight and narrow path to Christ. And so they're gonna write for obstacles that might get in their way. And then as you discuss them as a family or individually with them and kind of resolve those obstacles, like what could you do to overcome this obstacle? They can erase it, okay? So then it's very easy for them 
easy being a relative term to get to Christ. Well, it's going to tip over here. So then they can follow their path if they want to draw or whatever they want to do. They don't have to, if they want to, to get to Christ. Okay. And then I do have bingo cards this month. Last month I didn't do bingo cards because we were in the Psalms so much. And then I looked at this month and I'm like, <laughs> we're in Isaiah a lot. And there's not necessarily specific people, right? We could do principles or something like that. So I decided we would do the Bible books. I'm like, what are they called? So I put 25 of the books in the Bible, which is still of the Old Testament, which there's still so much more after that. I was like, oh, this will be a good chunk of them, but I feel like there's still a lot. So I did these cards and I actually, there's four options, like four different cards because I have four kids and I used to only do three because my four, five-year-old didn't play with us very often when she was younger. And now she does and the kids don't want to have the same card. So I did make a fourth card. So there are now four different versions. They all have the same words. They're just in different spots. And I put first and second Samuel, first and second Kings. I put those together. And so all those books are on here. Most of them we have already been in. There's a few that we have not. And so those ones might be a little trickier for them to know or there's some of them like Daniel we haven't been in yet, but a lot of them know the story of Daniel, at least, you know, Daniel in the lion's den, they probably have heard about it. And then I made the cards as well. And you don't have to use these clues because so, as I was going through them, I'm like, I don't even know if I know what's in all of these books. And so I was having to go through and look, some of them I just put what number they were. So if they wanted to go into their scriptures and count either in the like table of contents, like count what book it is, or they could flip through the scriptures. You, if you don't want to even use these at all, you could just open the Bible and have them find a certain book. Like, oh, find this one and then mark it on your card. So find Job and then you can mark it on your card. And that could help them at least become familiar with where the books are in the Old Testament. So that's another way to do it if you don't want to use these and kind of help them with what's going on in that book. So those are some different ways you could do it, or you probably have your own ways, or you can just read the names and they can cover them. That's totally fine too. But my kids are constantly asking for us to do bingo. I think mostly because they get prizes or little treats from it, and that's their favorite part. And so it's a really good way to review, to get them excited about the scriptures. Okay, so that's Come Follow Me for September. I hope you enjoy studying Isaiah. I actually enjoyed this more than I thought when I first saw it was all these Isaiah chapters. I was like, oh boy, this is gonna be fun fun, you know, trying to put together, but I actually really enjoyed it and I loved a lot of the concepts. So I'm excited to study it with my kids and please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and I will see you next time.